Embassy's Queen Corazon. I'm here at the Embassy Suite by Hilton and we're having our photo shoot uh, for the fashion show of fashion designer Mary Jane Opia. Enjoy! And here we are, the Embassy Suite by Hilton Hotel. And we just had a beautiful photo shoot uh, with fashion designer Mary Jane Opia. And uh, Mary Jane, tell us what's your inspiration for your beautiful fashion designs. My inspiration is seeing people looking fabulous, and especially the ladies. When you look at yourself, in your self-esteem, and everything, like making people look the way they should look. And in my line, I have all kind of models, like all kind of sizes. Who don't do like skinny or having preference in making an outfit. So we have everyone. We have variety. So my inspiration is making you beautiful. <laughs> That's nice, Mary Jane. Also, I would like to thank beautiful Mary Jane here for my beautiful gown. And of course, I got this award, Miss Noble uh, Model, Miss Noble Global Model 2021 that we just did last week in Glendale. Tell us a little bit about the awards, Mary Jane. Yeah. Africa Miss the World EMT One Awards. Like I mentioned earlier, I love making people look beautiful. And not only that, I love you know bringing different cultures together, uniting cultures through music, food, and absolutely clothing, fashion. So I get inspired in different angles of life. You know, every day is a life lesson to me. I learn every day. And making people happy is my number one priority. I can make everyone, I cannot make everyone happy, but I can try my best to you know, contribute positively to the world. That's so wonderful, Mary Jane. Also, tell us what's in store in the future. What are your plans for 2022? <laughs> people, I don't know, yes. people always ask me that. Like, what do you have? I know you have something coming up, you know, because yes. I'm all, I'm, yeah, I'm always having stuff coming up, you know. Stuff that we actually add, you know, to the society, to the world. And um, we just did a fabulous, you know, photo shoot with Star Beer. If you haven't heard that before, Star Beer, yes. yes. And we have, we're gonna be working, you know, in some more projects. We have a lot of projects coming up soon. So just stay tuned. That's what I can say for now. Because if you ask me, what are you gonna be doing tomorrow? I cannot guarantee you until you see for yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Jane. Hey, stay welcome. tuned. And thank you for having me. Yes. yes. She's a queen. Yes. She's a, how many titles? You have so many, many titles. titles. <laughs> She's a queen. She's yeah. global, global. global. She has this podcast. Yes, yes uh -huh. I'm doing up. a podcast. A queen for a song, my life. I'm a uh, world class beauty queen, USA ambassador. Uh, you know, a lot of different. She stuff. has a thank lot you. going on too. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is Queen Corazon. I'm here at the Stars and Brand in Glendale. And I want to congratulate producer and fashion designer Mary Jane Apia for a very successful awards night. And I got my beautiful. 
beautiful model, actress, world travel philanthropist. And I'd like to thank my family and friends for your support and call us um, Miss Mary Jane Opia for a very successful event. Congratulations. God bless. This is your host, Corazon Ugalde Yellen Armenta, and I'd like to introduce Ms. Hilda Til Mauro, and she's the president and CEO of Gaza Charities Incorporated. Hello, Hilda. How are you? Oh, pretty good, thank you. And how about you? I am good, thank oh, you. Congratulations, by the way, for your many, many uh, uh, beauty <laughs> title. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so here we are, and I want like to ask you, Gilda, about your uh, non-profit organization, the Gaza Charities. Tell me how you know how it started yeah. and your purpose. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh -huh. So, um, about 2013. Uh -huh. I went home to the Philippines to have a reunion with my classmates. Uh, that's uh, class 1952 high school. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then uh, after our event, uh, it was decided that we wanted to have a legacy to remember our get together and how we can contribute to the community. And uh, most of the retired uh, students, or my classmates, are retired teachers. And they all clamored for a library. And so pretty much that became, education became the focus of uh, our mission. So when I came back to the US, they charged me of putting together a an organization where we could raise funds to support the building of a library in our city and uh, that take took quite uh, a lot of work yeah but that's how it started and how I created the nonprofit because I found out that asking donations is not just a simple uh, you know handing the money to somebody most of the donors wanted tax deductions for their contributions mm -hmm. and that's yes. that's yeah, pretty much uh, the SOP here in the US yes. so that's why I started the nonprofit uh, 501 c 3 okay. which makes me a nonprofit public uh, tax exempt corporation in the US. Yeah. Well, that's a very good cause in the end. So, uh, tell me more uh, what kind of library are you planning to build? The library project is really uh, a sort of a combination of a community space, a learning center where children can be taught. You know, things which is outside of uh, what they learn from school. Yes. And yeah, maybe competition, uh, arts competition, 
uh, whatever projects that are not uh, particularly encouraged in school. So we can enhance that in the learning center and uh, in the particular space that we have created or conceptualized. <coughs> It's actually having a second floor where we can have uh, computers for use for you know whoever wants to use it. And mainly our focus is really for the elderly people and the young kids. Because when I went over there, I realized that the children, the little ones, really don't have a place to play and uh, get familiarized with the computers. Yes. And I go to a uh, what we call a uh, internet cafe, and there's one they run one computer and there's like six little kids and that's how that's that, that's the image that gave me the idea of pursuing the learning center as well not mm. just the library okay. well, that's a real noble cause <laughs> so we like to also know your beginning you know when you first came to the United States yeah. and yeah. Your, yeah. you know your yeah. goals mm -hmm. at yeah. that time well yeah. um, I came in as a Rotary Foundation fellow mm -hmm. to study, study cinema and television. That was a segue from my work in the Philippines. Uh, I was in radio uh, for about 10 years. And so a, a more practical way would be to move up and that will be into filmmaking. So I came here and went to USC to study cinema and television and eventually ended up with a graduate degree in instructional technology because then my my intentions was not just commercial filmmaking, but more into uh, the idea of instruction. So that's why my master's is really in education. Yeah. And so, which is sort of now, when I'm retired, um, it, it's just practical for me to use whatever I, you know, my, my degree in education mm -hmm. to probably help uh, build the library and understand sort of the challenges. Uh, in that particular um, area. Uh, my, my role was administering the department, but there, the majority actually, believe it or not, in the graduate program, the computer science department are actually composed of Asian students. And, and the longevity of the Asian students are better than of the domestic students, what we call the, the Americans because they go forward into finishing their graduate degree and into their PhD. And after that, of course, they go home and, you know, uh, help their pers uh, prospective countries. Most of them, I know that after graduation, they actually go back to the countries. Some of them are on scholarship from their government, and they are under obligation to really go back and pay back to the government. But some of them, of course, if they are from uh, uh, being uh, pay for by their families, because the tuition at USC is really very, it's one, very high. It's one of the most expensive schools in the US. And so if the family, uh, if the family uh, sends them to school, well, of course they'll find jobs here. That's great. Yeah, or, or yeah, whatever. So but, yeah. with your background, you know, what are your plans to help the Filipino community well, and Asian American community here yeah. in the US? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me break it down probably into a couple of parts. So when I retired and I decided that I probably want to go back and help back home as part of my bucket list. Yes. You know, when we, when we are at that age, then we decided we really have to go back to the community and help. And I decided also that here I can be supportive of the um, many uh, Asian American talents that are in this country. Yes. And um, as uh, our producer has mentioned, that he has really actually done research on that, and there are actually probably about five million Asian Americans, including those who are legal and right. the, the ones who are not documented. Yes. And it's really a, a, a rich pool of talents. And so as part of my, my uh, thrust or mission, as a nonprofit is not only in education but also promote globally Filipino and Asian American arts and culture. And so at the moment what I'm doing is helping out these young groups that are uh, very talented young mm -hmm. groups, whether in, in the genre of music or in, in theater or, or or arts, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they want to form a group and they want to, to expose themselves to the community, but they don't have the resources for it. Mm -hmm. And they pull together and they want to raise funds. And they're also finding the difficulty of raising funds 
because people are asking for where well, I want tax exemption yeah. exemption for my contribution mm -hmm. and so they approach me and yeah. this is where I come in as what we call a fiscal sponsor to a group of people who are non-profit having an intention of raising funds but really cannot do it on their own because they are not they don't have exempt status and yeah. that's how I help them do the accounting part and whatever mm -hmm. to assist them and to let them grow. Yes. Oh, that's really good. Now, what are some of the groups so far that you have helped? Well, I have helped um, a, an arts group mm -hmm. and uh, to help them with their exhibition. But what they do is really like when they receive money for donations, they uh, funnel the money through me and I sort of uh, uh, do all the accounting for that and then send the money back to them. Yes. And for that, you know, uh, small service, I get like a 5% for okay. being a fiscal sponsor. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. And mm -hmm. That requires writing tax letters that they can present to the government if they are at some point audited for their donations. And uh, you know, and uh, helping with uh, small companies like how do you go about having uh, a, a, a doing business as how to start your business, how to get social security numbers for little companies. I that's part of what I do. I advise those little um, nonprofit groups mm -hmm. of artists and whatever, uh, and how to start mm -hmm. as a business. So, because I, you know, I've also been an entrepreneur for about 20 years, so I understand those things. And as far as the public library, how close you are now when you're building it? Are you in the, the beginning stage? Yeah. So when we send a proposal to the mayor of my own city, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, if I want to start somewhere, I have to start somewhere yes. closer to me, okay, and, 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 and study from there. So when we approached the mayor, he decided right away, he was very happy with, with our intention, mm -hmm. and he said, I'm going to give you the land for it. So he gave us a piece of land, and in the beginning it was a very tiny piece of land, and he said, yes. you know, I, I, I want like 1,000 square feet right. at least, okay? <laughs> yeah. And so he gave it to us, and we raised our funds, and we started digging, mm -hmm. and then we got into roadblocks, and mostly it's a political issue, and... Um, Red tape, uh, you know, the usual stuff that that are obstacles to our project as a nonprofit. Yes. But right now we are going stronger. Um, we've been going for three years. We continue soliciting funds and doing projects. And right now uh, I'm solidifying our advisory board. We have people from. We have uh, a chair, international chair in Japan, mm -hmm. who is a professor in the Hiroshima University. Mm -hmm. And I have another uh, local chair in the U.S. for advisory board, and he's in Texas. And he is uh, uh, in, in a consulting company to help students mm -hmm. get funding to go to college. Yes. So that's a bit. And then we also have one in the Philippines, of course, who is uh, more into the political side of it, who can follow through our plans to talk to government officials yes. and a person who knows the lingo of uh, the political world, so to speak. And so that's where we are. And uh, right now, the mayor, we're in the process of really pushing for the mayor to to, to write an MOA. Mm -hmm. And the producer probably understand what it is. It's a yes. memorandum of understanding or agreement. agreement. Memorandum of agreement between us and the city that this is what they're going to do. And in turn, we are supposed to equip the library with uh, furniture and fixtures and computers and projectors and all those technical stuff to keep the library sort of in a technical level. Because I'm finding that um, even uh, there are so many older people who are members of the seniors community, they are illiterate, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, when the library is there, it's going to be used as a venue to do seminars and training and, um, and workshops because the main focus of, of most third world countries is really to address 
the issue of poverty yes. and uh, uh, poor health. But in my understanding, one of the biggest reasons why there is uh, so much of these issues is because of the ignorance of the populace. Mm -hmm. Meaning they don't know that they need to wash their hands before they eat. Or they don't know that they have to go into a latrine mm -hmm. to, you know, to do their business. Mm -hmm. okay? And with education, it will help, of course. And then for people who don't know how to use the land. Yes. So uh, a lot of these NGOs are going in to help them plant, how to fish, how to conserve the forest, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And this is mainly uh, the, the need for education. Yes. And yes. so the library is there as a conduit mm -hmm. to assist the local government into reaching out into the community. And yes. the ultimate goal is to eradicate ignorance okay. and illiteracy. <laughs> but it's, it's a big, big goal. Yes. Are there other future plans that you want to do in the future aside from this? Oh, well, and after that, if it goes, I mean, it, mm -hmm. the, the pushing to build libraries in the Philippines is huge. Yes. There are about 46,000 barangays, mm. of which uh, the government wants to build uh, what we call learning, uh, reading centers. Reading centers, or yes. Or use it as a community mm -hmm. hall. Okay, and there are about 16,000 uh, cities that need libraries. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they want to build libraries for congressional yes. congressional units in the Philippines. In my particular province, yes. Negros Oriental, mm -hmm. there's three districts, and they need libraries there. And then the cities also have 1201 and the barangays. So that's a huge mm. uh, undertaking. Right. So. Well, with this, do you plan to expand then? You know, all over areas. the Philippines. Oh, so yeah. Well, yeah. there are other NGOs Others. who are doing yes. this already. Right. Right. So, but so mm -hmm. we're just learning and and getting to know each other, like as brothers in yes. our mm -hmm. uh, in our quest to help build the libraries. There are other NGOs that are already doing this, and they're very successful, but they're mostly in Luzon, in Luzon area. Areas, and yeah. closer to Manila, closer yes. to where, yeah. where the government officials the government. are, and, <laughs> and most of them are like four barrel projects. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So. Okay, well, so. thank you very much, uh, Hilda Timaro. Yes, yes. it's my pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Yes.